Hey guys, welcome back to Chickadee Farm. Today is Thanksgiving and sadly, we were supposed to be down at my mom's to celebrate with them. However, um, after David's family gathering up in Canada, both David and I came down with COVID. So we didn't want to risk it uh, going down there and possibly giving it to them. So we are staying at home, which means we are going to have a very small turkey. Actually, it's not very small. I think it's 13 pounds, so it's, it's sizable. But a turkey oven is preheated and um, just a relaxed Thanksgiving dinner together. So I've actually been uh, busy in the kitchen already this morning. And well, actually last night I made a big thing of bread, just a bowl um, to use for our stuffing, which I just pulled those out of the oven. I cut them up and uh, toasted them in the oven. So those will be ready to go. And then um, we, instead of doing dinner rolls with Thanksgiving, David really loves having Yorkshire puddings. So um, I used to do rolls as well, but they just never got eaten. So instead I uh, whipped up a thing of sourdough as well. So we, I'm gonna throw these baguettes into the oven. They just need to get scored and put a little cheese on the top of them. And I will bake them for about 15 minutes with the cover on, then take the cover off and uh, do another probably 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I'll also, right now the heat is at 485 and I'll drop it down to 475 when I take the cover off. And the reason I'm doing that is just so we have some nice bread to have turkey sandwiches with, with the leftovers. All right, so Next thing I need to get done is the pie crust and the pumpkin custard for our pumpkin pie. So that can get in the oven and baking as well. Actually, I thought first I should put in order what things need to go first. So I have here the list of everything that's being made and uh, definitely some things need a little more lead time. So pumpkin pie and let's see the Yorkshire pudding batter needs to um, get mixed up and then it just will sit there until it's ready to go into the oven, which is just really about 25 minutes before dinner. But it's good to let the batter sit. So that needs to get done. Uh, the cranberry sauce. And the gravy. All need to get started. So I'm actually going to put the gravy and the cranberry sauce on the stove first, and then we'll get to the pie and the Yorkshire puddings. So these are the breadcrumbs or bread cubes that we use for our stuffing, but I'm just going to set to these to the side for right now. All right, the first one is easy. We just need to get the cranberries in a pot with a little bit of water and orange juice. So just gonna give these a good rinse. We love cranberry sauce, so I'm gonna do quite a bit of it. Try to not spill them anywhere, and then I will go through and kind of just make sure there's none of, no more of those guys in there. All right, I'm just gonna put like about a half a cup of water in the bottom of this just so it can get started. And then I'm gonna grab an orange. So basically I'm just using the same recipe. It's not really a recipe, I just make it up. But I did, uh, when I canned the cranberry sauce uh, in the summer, uh, just going to zest my oranges and put the zest in with the cranberries. And then I will squeeze the orange juice into there and I'll actually let the oranges, orange halves just sit in there and cook with them and then just take them out at the very end. Mm. 
All right, we're just gonna put this on a low heat, maybe. There we go. And I probably will grab a cinnamon stick um, towards the end of cooking and put that in there, but I don't want it to get super cinnamon-y. Cinnamon so I will hold off on that. I will probably use this to make some cranberry orange muffins. Just went outside in my green stock and grabbed what is left of the herbs. My sage is still doing quite well in some areas, not actually in the green stock. This, this was from the stuff that I had planted in the um, planter boxes. And then rosemary is still doing fine for right now. We haven't gotten any super hard freezes yet, as is the thyme. The parsley, on the other hand, <laughs> I'm just gonna be able to salvage what, I'm gonna try and salvage what I can, um, but I think I have enough for tonight's dinner. All right, just gonna give these guys a quick rinse and then we will get ready with the gravy. So I actually found a recipe. I've never found a great recipe for gravy. So I actually found a great one on the New York Times cooking website. So I'm going to try that, but first I'm going to use the neck and bits from the turkey to make some broth. I'm not going to use the innards, neither David or I are fans of those. So. But first, I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in here as well and just give these a nice uh, browning. And then we'll just add water and some herbs and let it simmer. A little bit of salt too. All right, these have gotten a nice good amount of browning on them and in the bottom of the pan. So I'm just going to add some carrots, a handful of the herbs, and a handful of some of our freeze-dried celery. I'm not going to add any onions right now because um, we'll be adding it as part of the gravy recipe. So I'll just this is just for the broth, and I'm going to add a whole bunch of water. Actually, you know what I'm going to do first. One more little trick I like to do is just about a quarter cup of dry white wine. Just go in there and scrape up those brown bits on the bottom because that is a pure flavor. Don't want to miss those. And the white wine just gives it a little extra kick of flavor. All right, I think we have all of that. I'm gonna make quite a bit of broth because I also will use this broth for our stuffing. All right, we're just gonna let this come up to a simmer and simmer away for a couple of hours. Actually, I almost forgot. I also want to throw in a bay leaf and some peppercorns. So maybe a teaspoon of peppercorns. Now we'll let it come up to a simmer. For the pie crust, I several years ago, um, uh, actually many, many years ago now, when I first decided to start making pies, um, I found this Alton Brown recipe and I, it's just always worked really well for me. So that's what I use. And it calls for, it actually calls for lard. And I think I do have lard somewhere, but I'm not sure where. So we are just going to use um, Crisco 
What is this called? Yeah, Crisco. Shortening. Shortening. That's what this is called. <laughs> so we're going to use shortening and butter. Um, so we need six tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of lard. And actually, I want to double this recipe, so I'm going to grab another stick of butter. And we're just going to cut this butter up and um, shortening up into little pieces and put it in the freezer for a little bit to get nice and cold. Bread coming out of the oven, isn't that beautiful? This middle one never gets quite as browned as the other two, but it still actually cooks through at exactly the same rate, which is nice. All right, let's get those spread out a little bit and they can cool. All right, our butter is shortening our nice and hard. So we are just going to drop it all in here. And I have some ice water right here as well. And we are just going to pulse this a couple of times to get the butter and shortening incorporated. And then we'll start adding water slowly. is mostly incorporated in. We still have some larger chunks, but that is fine. Just get that mixed up. And then it says to do a quarter cup of water. And he actually says to use a squirt bottle and spray the cold water on, but that's just, that's too much work. So we're just going to sprinkle it on by the tablespoon. And we will pulse a couple times, put some more water on, pulse a couple times until it comes, will hold together when you squeeze it. All right, this is a nice consistency. So we are going to turn this out onto a floured counter and get it all smushed together and rolled out. And of course, pumpkin pie is a single crust pie, but I'm since I'm making a pie crust, I figured I might as well uh, make two of them and just put the other one in my freezer. And it will be all ready for us at Christmas time. So we'll cut that basically in half. We will just wrap this guy up into a nice little disc. Actually, you know what? I think we are supposed to let this, put this in the fridge to let it rest for a couple of minutes. Let me just double check that. Yes, needs to go into the fridge for 30 minutes. So we will just wrap this up and we will make the custard while that is chilling. The first thing that we need to do is this calls for this recipe so I should tell you what I'm making. I'm making an, an apple butter pumpkin pie. Um, and this recipe calls for three eggs. Well, my girls have, only one of them is laying right now, so I do not have many eggs. And I figured this would be the perfect time to try out my freeze dried eggs. So for one large egg, you need two tablespoons of the freeze dried egg and two tablespoons of water. Okay, 
and we're just gonna stir this up and let it set for a couple minutes while we get the rest of the ingredients in the bowl. All right, we have our cranberry sauce, which is looking lovely. I did take out the oranges and I added a cinnamon stick. And we are going to add a little bit of sugar now. I don't like super sweet cranberry sauce, but we will start with, we'll start with a quarter cup and then give it a taste test. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's good. There was still cranberry that hadn't popped. <laughs> mm. I think we could use a little bit more. Oh, I just love cranberry sauce. So good. So I might go in here with a potato masher and just make sure all of the cranberries are popped. Um, but otherwise, I think we are good to go with this. And then I can just go into the fridge and be ready for dinner. All right, we are going to start on the Yorkshire pudding batter now. So it needs three eggs. Now these are a little small. I'm gonna go ahead and do four. Actually, I need to give them a quick wash because <laughs> they're a little dirty. All right, so this recipe, um, also comes from Food Network, and it's called Time for Yorkshire Pudding. And I will link these, oops, let me get that in there, link these in the description so you can do them. But surprisingly, Yorkshire puddings are quite easy. The other way that you might know these, they're called um, popovers as well. So very simple batter. And I'm doing it, um, mixing it in this uh, measuring cup because it has the pour spout. Um, is what you do is you stick the uh, pan into the oven, very hot oven, I think 425 or something like that, and melt the fat in the each of the cups. And then you pour this into the really hot pan. So it's just easier if it's, um, in something that has a pour spout. <laughs> so we need a cup and a quarter of milk. And I'm just gonna get that whisked together. All right, then we need a teaspoon of kosher salt. mixed in and then what makes this the time for Yorkshire pudding is we're going to put in a couple of tablespoons of fresh thyme leaves. I'm going to give these a quick little chop. So Yorkshire puddings were, as I said, it's a, it's a David thing and it was always on their Thanksgiving table when he was growing up. So for him, this is an absolute must at Thanksgiving and Christmas. I had never made them before when I met him and he looked at me in despair when that was not on my original menu plan for the first Thanksgiving that we spent together. So ever since then, 
he gets his Yorkshire puddings. And actually, I quite enjoy them myself. All right, and that's it. Super simple, and I'm just gonna cover this with plastic wrap and it will just sit out. Actually, I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator for the next couple hours because it really only needs to sit out at room temperature for about 45 minutes before it goes in the oven. So just gonna get it covered. All right, next up, I am going to slice up a bunch of, or chop up a bunch of onions for several recipes that we will need them for. We will need some for the stuffing, some for the spinach balls, which is gonna be the next recipe we tackle, and some for the gravy. So I'm just gonna get these all chopped up at once. The red onions are actually for the gravy. They need to be caramelized, so I won't chop those. I will slice them. Again, you might as well just get all the onions done at once. chopped up and I'm just gonna slice these guys and I will put them directly in the pan right now actually no I won't because I need to do the spinach balls first and I need to cook onions for that first All right, so these famous spinach balls that I keep talking about. This is actually from my mom. She put together just a collection of recipes that we've used as a family for many, many years. Some of it is family, some of it is uh, came from friends, um, some of it are ours that we've put, made fame, not famous, <laughs> made to be favorites for the family. Anyway, so she put them all into a book and spinach balls is one of them. Um, they actually came from a friend of ours named Karen Boas, and they actually aren't balls. They more are more patties, which my family loves to tell me, but they are one of my absolute favorite Thanksgiving and Christmas sides. So we are going to start with one third cup of butter. And the recipe actually doesn't say to cook the onions, but I just really prefer the texture when the onions have been cooked. So we're gonna put the butter in there and um, it says one medium onion. So we'll do that much. And just let that melt and start cooking. There is quite a bit of salt in the recipe, but I'm gonna just put a little bit on the onions here as they are cooking down. And then the recipe calls for a box of frozen spinach. Um, I don't know how big a box is and I only have bags. I think though that they're 16 ounces. So I'm just going to weigh out 16 ounces of bagged frozen spinach. We need a nice big bowl to mix this all up in. So we'll just use that guy. This is not completely fogged, but it's okay. That is nine. You know, actually, I feel like maybe it's 12. You know, I should look it up. Let me look it up. Okay, it's actually 10 ounces. So, I need to take some of this back. Because we are at 14. Mm -hmm. All right, close enough. And this guy can go back in the freezer. All right, because this spinach is still frozen, I'm actually going to add it to our onion mixture so it can thaw. 
hopefully evaporate some of the water that's in it as well. Those would have been very spinachy spinach balls if I had done full 16 ounces, I was thinking. All right, and then to this bowl, we are going to add three cups of uh, stuffing mix. And it specifically calls for Pepperidge Farm, but any stuffing mix that is, um, has the, the spices and stuff in it already. And you also want the small pieces, not cubed. Three cups of that. We need a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. I'm gonna do a little bit more than that. We need one teaspoon of garlic salt. A quarter teaspoon of thyme. This is just some of the fresh stuff I just chopped up. Then we need a teaspoon of salt which I already put probably a half teaspoon in with the onions. So just a little bit more. And one third of a cup, one, sorry, one quarter of a cup of Parmesan cheese. This is kind of what brings it over the top. And we need three beaten eggs. So I'm just, again, using uh, my freeze dried eggs. Right, I'm going to mix this all together first and then we will put in our spinach and onion mix mixture when it is all thawed. And then we will let this sit for a while and just uh, kind of meld all the flavors together. And then we will form them into little patties and bake them in the oven for 350 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes. So I am making a full recipe of this today, even though, <laughs> so the other sad thing about my spinach balls is that uh, only Quinn likes them. Uh, David and Liam do not. Uh, so I'm really the only one that eats them. And uh, this makes quite a few. But what I'm gonna do is I am just going to freeze about half of them so I don't have to make them again at Christmas. And we'll just be ready to go. All right, I'm just gonna turn this off and let the residual heat continue to thaw this and I want to let it cool a little bit before we put it in with the eggs. In the meantime, in the same pan, I actually just moved the spinach mixture to a different bowl to cool so we can get started on our stuffing. Well, dressing because we're not stuffing the turkey. So this is just some breakfast sausage that I'm gonna get cooked up. And then we will also need eggs for this, so I will mix up a couple more of my freeze-dried eggs. I'm just going to do two eggs for this. I 
So I need to add four tablespoons of water. All right, definitely want some time. And a good amount of rosemary. A nice, good handful of the sage. Actually, that needs one more quick rinse. And a handful of the parsley. This is actually a bit of an experiment for me this year. I have made a sausage stuffing in the past, but it was always a cornbread stuffing. And we liked it, but um, we just, I prefer the real bread, regular bread stuffing. So I figured we could do the same flavors and just use regular bread. Sage is the epitome of what the holiday meals smell like for me. Oh, just love it. I'm going to add a little bit more. You want this chopped up fairly finely. Don't really like getting a big hunk of herb, especially these really strong herbs like sage and rosemary. Nobody wants to bite into a big chunk of that <laughs> in their stuffing. All right, I think that's a good amount. Our sausage here, see if we've got us some good brown bits. Perfect. I'm going to put the sausage directly in the bowl that we will be mixing everything in. And then we'll use the onions to deglaze this pan. Might need to add a little bit of broth to it. Make sure we get all those yummy brown bits. Do, let's see. Yeah, rest of the onions. burned onto the bottom. I just realized I had not put my apron back on after I took a little break for lunch. So the other thing that we are experimenting with is our freeze-dried celery. So you, you know that I put it in the broth, but of course that has lots of time to rehydrate as it's um, simmering. So, but I don't want to put these into the bowl and not only does the bread have to rehydrate, but also these. So I'm actually going to rehydrate them now in a little bit of broth. I am going to add a bit of my freeze-dried garlic powder. Feeling lazy, didn't want to chop up more garlic. <laughs> and some black pepper. Maybe a half a teaspoon. Right, I'm 
then the last ingredient is some of the fresh cranberries. So, I need to wash these. The recipe that I used to use um, called for dried cranberries, and that's probably a little too much. They were good, but they really made it a little too sweet for us. So I am going to try it with fresh cranberries all chopped up, and I think that should be perfect. All right, I think that is plenty for our cranberries. Just put those others back in the bag. So this is just our onions and herbs and sausage. And I'm going to go ahead and add the celery plus the rest of the broth that was in there. All right, I'm gonna let this cool down just a touch as well before I put the eggs in and then we'll add the extra broth and the bread cubes. So we'll come back when we're ready to do that. While we wait for that to cool, I am just going to get the red onions starting to caramelize for our gravy. about two tablespoons of butter or so. Probably a little much for this amount of onions, but that's okay. Who doesn't love some extra butter? This recipe does call for adding some sugar, but I have always felt that if you caramelize onions correctly, you don't need to add sugar. They will get nice and brown and sweet all on their own. You just have to have patience because it can take a while. So I'm just gonna turn this heat really low and let these very slowly get all nice and caramelized. All right, now I think it is time to do a little cleanup and then I actually think I get to sit and relax for a minute. You might have noticed I haven't said anything about the turkey. <laughs> And that is because David is taking care of the turkey. So it has been sitting out. He brined it two days ago with just a dry rub. And so it was sitting in the fridge, um, getting the skin all nice and dried out and um, needs to sit out in, at room temperature probably for another half hour or so. And then he will put it in the oven. So I don't have to worry about the turkey. It's probably one of my least favorite things to cook at Thanksgiving is the turkey. So. I'm happy to hand it off to him. We have also let the spinach mixture um, sit for a while. So we can get these formed up and also in the oven. These I, I don't mind at all if they um, are just room temperature when I eat them. Actually, I kind of prefer it. So, it'll be fine if they're out of the oven for a while before we actually eat. We're aiming for a six o'clock dinner, by the way. Actually, I should just scoop these out first, and then I can form them. So the reason that this recipe became part of our, our traditions um, in my house is, like I said, it was from a friend of ours who, and in Alaska, growing up, when, well, when we lived there, it might be different now, most of the people that lived there didn't have close family close by. It, typically, you, all of your family lived um, in the lower 48 or outside as we called it. And uh, so Thanksgiving was with friends and we had a really church, tight church group. 
we went to a fairly small church. And so we would have probably six or seven families come over every year for Thanksgiving. And everybody would show up early and the ladies would all cook in the kitchen. Typically we did have our first snow and we lived on a great sledding hill. So all us kids would be outside sledding and the guys would all go hunting. I don't think they ever once brought anything back, but they always went. I think uh, the ladies probably preferred it that way. So they were out from underfoot, but it was just, it was so much fun. And this was also the way that we got a lot of cool, cool new recipes is people would bring dishes to share and um, we would discover them and loved them. So they became family favorites. All right, so I'm just going to shape these into little patties and then we will get them baked. I suppose you could leave them in the ball shape if you want and then they actually would be spinach balls, but that is not the way we have always done it. So I will continue to call them spinach balls, but make spinach patties. So sadly, uh, when we did move down to the, the lower 48, moved to Washington, it was quite shocking to me that everybody had Thanksgiving with their families and not with their friend groups. And because we still didn't have family close by, um, we, it was always then just the four of us for Thanksgiving dinner. So it was always a little, little bittersweet, but I have very, very fond memories of those Thanksgivings in Seward. Well, weirdly, I don't think I have anything else to do right now. And it is only three o'clock. So other than take the stuffing and spinach balls out of the oven when they're done. So I am going to go sit down and have a cold beverage and relax for a bit. And I will come back with you when we are ready to do the final push. You guys, it has started to snow. Very exciting. I'm not sure if you'll be able to actually see, but isn't it pretty? It is not our first snow of the year, but, or of the season, um, but close to it. And I don't know, it just makes holidays feel all that much better. All right, so it is now four, almost 4.40. So we are going to get the potatoes peeled and just in the water, I won't start it um, until we're a little bit closer to the time, but I would like to get them peeled and ready to go. I think I'm gonna do a cream and garlic infusion thing to put in it. I'm considering also putting some cheese, but I haven't quite gotten that far yet. chopped up into smaller pieces to go into the water. Right, we are going to salt this water quite well as well. Going to refill my little box here. And like I said, I'll just leave this here um, with the lid on it until we're a little bit closer to the time and then we will get them onto boil. Um, I'm gonna get this into the compost fill up my salt cellar, and then we will make the cream mixture that will go into the potatoes when I mash them. I need to run downstairs and grab some more garlic. And then I also want to get the Yorkshire pudding batter out of the refrigerator and warming up a bit. Oh, I brought out milk. I don't need 
need milk. I need heavy cream. All right, I'm just going to, I do not need three garlic. Smash these guys. quarters of a cup of cream, a couple tablespoons of butter, a small block of cream cheese. I don't think I'll add it all. I think I'll add. Hmm. Should I add it all? Let's add half of it. Yeah, I think that's probably good. All right. And then I'm just going to do some short bursts in the microwave with this. Actually, first, 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 first. Let's get some salt and pepper in here as well. All right, now into the microwave with this for a couple of quick bursts, like I said. All right, so the last things that we have to do are cook the potatoes and mash them. And, um, and then I do have some green beans that I'll just throw in a hot pan with some garlic and some butter and get those fried up. And yeah, then I think that's it. The turkey is in the oven, looking beautiful. Ooh, you wanna see it? We actually spatchcocked it, but there it is going to be gorgeous. So I think I actually have a few minutes again to just sit and relax. Actually, while I'm waiting and have time, I'm going to prep the Yorkshire pudding pan. And so this is a specific pan for Yorkshire puddings. It has kind of deep straight sides um, so that they come straight up and then they kind of poof out over the top. Um, it's always a good idea to put them on a tray, however, because you do put a good amount of fat in the bottom of these. And so as they raise up, it can definitely kind of splatter out. So a good idea to have a tray under them. So I'm going to grab some butter and we're going to put a tablespoon, a uh, half a tablespoon of butter in each of the cups. Butter has gotten very soft. And like I said, we are going to put this in the oven just like this until it is screaming hot and the butter is all melted. And then pop it out really quick, pour the batter in, put it right back in the oven. I thought it would be nice to actually set a table. This tablecloth is horribly wrinkled, but I'm not going to iron it. <laughs> It'll look fine, Ugh, maybe. Ugh, yeah, okay. I'm gonna go iron this and then I'll be back. Okay, marginally better. These are all my little pumpkins. Most of them, this was the only one that was actually ripe when I picked it. So all the rest have actually ripened, which is kind of fun. to get candles for those and then get some place settings done for us for dinner. So I know I've talked about it before, but we used to live on the Oregon coast for about a year and a half, which happens to be very close to the Willamette Valley um, wine country which has quite a few AVAs there now. 
and um, one of our favorites was Sokol Blosser. So we are going to have that. They are known for their Pinot Noirs for the most part. That's their claim to fame. And even though I'm not a huge Pinot Noir fan, um, they definitely have some good ones. And Sokol Blosser and Van Duzer were our absolute favorites. and airing out a bit. Doesn't need much since it is such a light red. And then our kids got us a little Frenchy aerator. <laughs> yes, that's you. That's you on our wine bottle. All right, I have turned on the potatoes to start boiling. And I thought we would finish up our gravy and then I'm probably going to wrap it up for the night because David and I are going to enjoy our time together. But I will let you see how it all looks when it's all on the table. So let's finish up our gravy. It's pretty easy. Okay, my onions might have gotten a little more than caramelized, but that's okay. So we already put two tablespoons of butter in with the onions. So we don't need to do that. But now we need to add two tablespoons of flour. And let that cook away for a little bit. And like I said, this is from the New York Times cooking website. And it is called umami gravy. All right. So then all we'll need is two cups of stock, which I also have heating up here, and a quarter cup of milk, whole milk. I'm actually going to use um, heavy cream again, and a tablespoon of nutritional yeast, which crazy enough, I actually happen to have. Uh, so yeah, and then We'll just mix that all together, let it thicken up a bit, and uh, taste for flavor and seasonings. All right, let's get our first cup in here. Turn it off for a second so David could check on the turkey. I think I'll go ahead and get our nutritional yeast in there. And I think that this is the thing that like, takes this over the top and gives it that true umami flavor. If you've never used nutritional yeast, it's used really often in vegan cooking for a mock cheesy flavor. And I agree, it definitely does that. I don't use it super often, but occasionally, I actually love to put it in my pizza crust sometimes. All right, we're just gonna bring this up to a simmer and let it thicken up and then I will add the cream and I probably am going to strain off all of these onions that are not looking super pretty. We will let this thicken up a little bit more here, but I am gonna give it a quick taste test. See how we're feeling. Hmm. Definitely still needs some more salt. Otherwise, that's yeah, quite good. And I actually think I am going to leave in the little bits of caramelized onion. It might not look super pretty, but I got a little piece of it in my taste and it was pretty good. All right, so yeah, I'm just going to let this go ahead and continue to simmer and turn that down a little bit actually. 
And once the potatoes are done, we will mash them up with our cream butter cream cheese mixture that we made. And turkey should come out, Yorkshire puddings will go in, and we will have our Thanksgiving dinner. Thanks so much for joining me, you guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, this is a nice, relaxed uh, Thanksgiving for two. So I hope you had fun, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.